Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, North Sea Hero, again. <clears throat> Although, I guess today you could call me North FC Hero, because today we're going to be talking about the metric system. Yeah, I wanted to do another car vlog, but I wanted to take another little break from politics here for a second. I want to talk about systems of measurement. <clears throat> now, for one thing, the metric system is actually used a, a little more commonly in the United States than a lot of people think. Uh, for example, grams are used um, in drugs, both uh, pharmaceutical and illicit, quite commonly, <clears throat> depending on the depending on what kind of illicit drug we're talking about. It's probably using grams as at least one of the common measurements, at least as far as I can tell. I don't know. I'm not not big into injecting marijuanas. <sighs> Personally. But, um, pharmaceuticals, it's going to be in milligrams and grams of stuff. Uh, nutrition facts on food labels. You've got your grams of fat, your grams of protein, your grams of carbohydrates, your milligrams of sodium, your micrograms of X, Y, and Z on like supplements and stuff. But why do we stick with the imperial system? Why not just switch to using metric for everything? Like our bros over in everywhere else in the world. Except, I think, Myanmar, a.k.a. Burma, is like the one other country that mainly uses imperial. Something like, something like that. In any case, <clears throat> the imperial system is just more real than the metric system. And what I mean by that is this. <clears throat> if you take pure water, pure water, anytime we'll day or night, you take pure water, okay, freezes at zero degrees Celsius, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Makes sense, right? Here's the thing. I'm not made of pure water. I'm made of human. And the Fahrenheit scale was invented based on, well, attempted to be created based perfectly on the human body. Now, it wasn't perfect. Um, <laughs> there is a, because the average human temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's the normal resting average body temperature. Um, there's a, there's a hypothesis that the guy who invented the Fahrenheit system, his name was something something Fahrenheit, or Fahrenheit, I don't know, he was like German or some, somewhere around that, German, Austrian, something like that, I don't know. His last name was Fahrenheit. And uh, there's a hypothesis that he had a fever when he measured himself to test the 100 degree uh, baseline. And then for the zero degree baseline, because, well, he couldn't very well just freeze a human being uh, to test his hypothesis. I mean, f physically he could have, but it wouldn't exactly be the most ethical solution, even if he were to try to use a cadaver or something. I don't know. In any case, he used salt water. But it was a pretty decent approximation. I mean, um, if a human being is left exposed in zero degree temperature, they're going to, zero degree Fahrenheit temperature, they're going to freeze pretty solid. And, um, I mean, the average human temperature is pretty close to 100, 98.6. It's not perfect, but it's something. But see, because it's based on the human body temperature, the comfortable, the comfortable human temperatures are closer to 100 than they are to zero. <clears throat> see, here's the thing about centigrade, right? Or Celsius, if you prefer. I've always felt that the degrees centigrade are just too large, man. They're just too large, Right? Like, if you were to tell somebody in a metric system country, it's 20 degrees out, then they're thinking, oh, it's a nice, cool, summer breezy day. And if you tell them it's 30 degrees out, they're going to think, oh, it's a bit uncomfortably warm. If you tell a, a, a North American, well, specifically a United States citizen or someone who's just used to the imperial system... So I guess our bros over in <clears throat> in uh, Myanmar are the same way. I think that's the country. I'm not 100% on that, though. So feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that one. I'm just doing this off the cuff like I always do. Uh, some, some planning goes into these, but not a whole lot. These are meant to be more candid. 
to the point, you know, trying to bring the you back to YouTube, you know. <clears throat> In any case, if you tell someone like me that it's 20 degrees out, I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's going to be cold. I'm going to need to bundle up. You tell me it's 30 degrees out, I'm going to think, oh, okay, it's cold. I'm going to need to bundle up. Um, now, granted, there is a bit of a difference there because the 30 degrees Fahrenheit is above the freezing point of water, whereas the 20 degrees Fahrenheit is well below it. So with the 20 degree weather, there is some liability that any water that gets on you is liable to freeze on you, which would be bad. So there is a bit of a difference there, but it's like either way, you're going to have to bundle up, you know. Now, if you tell someone like me, oh, it's 50 degrees outside, I'm going to think, well, it's a bit on the chilly side. Maybe I should wear a long sleeve shirt. I mean, a lot of people are going to be great reaching for their jackets or even their coats at that point. My grandma's going to, you know, be reaching for 17 layers. But I'm going to think, oh, it's pretty chilly out. I should grab a long sleeve shirt, maybe a light jacket. If you tell someone that uses the metric system that it's 50 degrees out, their responses, their reactions are going to vary between, oh my god, we're all going to die, and eh, just another day in Melbourne. So, Fahrenheit, ironically, when it comes to measuring like ambient temperatures, is technically, technically more precise, because just the units of measurement are smaller. So as you take your measurements, they're going to be closer together, you know, uh, overall. I guess I should say <coughs> Fahrenheit without using decimal places is more precise than Celsius with decimal places, right? <laughs> like my 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 uh my grandma's car had the ability to change between uh Fahrenheit and Celsius for like the internal the in the in cab temperature controls. Uh they keep accidentally getting it stuck on Celsius. It's hilarious. So with Fahrenheit, it goes like 70 degrees, 71, 72, 73, etc. And remember, this is Fahrenheit, so we're not trying to like roast people alive here. Uh, so um, but with Celsius, it's like 20, 20.5, 20 30, or 21, 21.5. I mean, you probably could turn it up to 30 if you wanted. That'd be pretty high level, but maybe when it's the dead of winter, <clears throat> you might want to start off the heat being on 30 degrees Celsius. I don't know. I looked up some basic conversions before I did this, by the way. Huh. Research. But what is the point of the imperial system? Well, a lot of people seem to think that the imperial system was created by just blindfolding yourself and throwing darts at a board, okay? And to be fair, to someone who grew up with the metric system, it may seem that way, but it's actually a little bit the other way around. See, how familiar are you guys with Hangul? Probably pronouncing that somewhat incorrectly, but whatever, I'm doing my best work here. Hangul is the alphabet of Korea. Now, the Korean alphabet, Hangul, is very easy to learn. It's very precise and everything has its own pronunciation, right? Every character has a pronunciation. Um, and that's how it is with a lot of languages. A lot of people love to boast about, oh, my insert favorite language, you know, insert my favorite language here. Every letter means one thing. And then you come up with all the exceptions, like with French, you know, am I supposed to leave the last 25% or the last 38% of the letters of uh, on the end of the word when I'm pronouncing it out loud? Like, what am I even doing here? Um, just more rules to memorize, right? But with Hangul, it's very precise because Hangul is not an alphabet that evolved like the Chinese alphabet or, you know, the, the Chinese writing system, I should say, or the Japanese syllabaries. You know, it's not like hiragana or kanji or katakana or the Chinese writing system or the Arabic writing system or the Latin writing system. It didn't just evolve over time from earlier things. It didn't start with the Phoenician alphabet and then make all its way down to the split where in English, the, you know, the, the letter P makes a P sound, but in Cyrillic, that's the R because they're there. That's yeah, that's the R and their P is like a squarey pie. And you know, it, it, it didn't evolve, right? Some dude just sat down one day and said, Hmm, today he, he woke up in bed and he said, 
hmm, today I will invent an alphabet for our language. And he did. And that's why Korean is, the Korean writing is so precise. Centigrade is very similar. One day someone said, hmm, I will come up with a new temperature system based on pure water. Okay, cool. Now, Mr. Fahrenheit had the idea of doing the same thing, but with the human body. <clears throat> But what about my 12 inches in a foot? You can't just slide the decimal point around. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, when converting from feet to inches, you can't just sliggity sliggity slide that decimal point like you can with meters and centimeters and decimeters and millimeters and all that good stuff. But you know what you can do with a foot? Divide it by three evenly. Oh, oh, oh! Imagine you take a meter and you say, hmm, today I will divide this meter into thirds. What are you left with? Well, you're left, if you go into centimeters, you're left with 33.33333333. You see where I'm going with this. See, the thing about the imperial system, whether it be our volume measurements, our length measurements, they're all based on generally on one of two things. Either base 12 or powers of two. Eight ounces in a cup, eight is a power of two. Two ounces, or two cups in a pint, two pints in a quart, four quarts in a gallon. You just keep doubling things or multiplying it by some power of two. You start with a power of two and you multiply by powers of two. And you get where you're going pretty quickly. Um, I mean, it's, it's a thing. Again, it wasn't somebody just blindfolded themselves and said, all right, uh, how many ounces are in a cup? Ooh, eight. Nice even number. That was lucky. How many cups in a pint? Uh, two? Oh, that was lucky. How many pints in a quart? Oh, two again. That was, oh, that's lucky. How many quarts in a gallon? Oh, four? Well, now we're double doubling, you know. Oh, but it's still a power of two. No, this wasn't some blindfolded dart throwing thing, okay? It, it has a foundation. Okay, you may not like it. You may not agree with it. And that's perfectly fine. Be a fan of the metric system all you want. But this idea that it just came out randomly with no logical basis at all is the opposite of the truth. It came from real world experience. It wasn't some scientists sat down one day and said, we're going to define things based on this very precise artificial man-made measurement, which is perfectly fine, but that's just not how it worked. It came from real life experience. And as far as all this base 12 stuff, all this 12 inches in a foot and stuff, um, the people who built the aqueduct system in ancient Rome, known as, get this, the ancient Romans, uh, they were using base 12. I think. Pretty sure they were. I mean, their numerals were just a whole different system, but when it came to actually, like, you know, they, they were they were not using metric, okay? That's my point. They weren't using metric. They were using something else entirely. Uh, oh, what about the ancient Egyptians? <laughs> Those hardcore bastards were using base 60. Base 60. 60, by the way, is a multiple of 12. It's uh, the product of 12 and 5. Two very fine, solid numbers. They took five twelves together and said, mm, this is our base for our number system. And then they, you know, go and build the pyramids and all kinds of other mathematically beautiful, precise stuff, not using the metric system. So this idea that the metric system is the only way to get any kind of precision work done, no. Now, for science purposes, I think the metric system is more than fine. I think it's honestly the best we have for like precise scientific measurements. Okay, if you're gonna be working on the International Space Station, you should be using metric, in my humble and honest opinion, as an American. But, I don't like the idea of being told it's 20 degrees out and, uh, and thinking, oh, well, it's pretty good weather, and then when it goes to from spring to summer and it's blistering heat, the change was only 10 degrees. Maybe people who grow up with that are much more comfortable with it. I don't know, but that's just me. In any case, my my point is the imperial system has a foundation, okay? It wasn't just some dudes th blindfoldedly throwing darts at a dartboard, okay? That's just a meme, basically. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about today. This is North Sea Hero, signing out. <laughs>